Hello everyone. It's good to be with you again today. Uh, today we're talking about activity and passivity in recovery and this. This is just one topic in this series on recovery uh, that we started uh, during the summer uh, after COVID was kind of causing us to be in a, a sort of lockdown. Um, people weren't able to come into the office for our group meetings and so uh, we decided to make these videos and uh, podcasts to get the message out uh, so people could listen outside of the office. So that's where, what we're doing in this series. Uh, we're dealing with recovery issues in general, not just recovery from addictions or mental illness, but recovery in a broad sense um, in terms of the human condition. Uh, what other, what, you know, whatever kind of issues that we're dealing with, whether it's just some sin, some habits, some unhealthy attachments, or maybe uh, addictions or mental illnesses, could even be f physical illnesses, uh, whatever we're in recovery from, these topics might be helpful to somebody, to somebody, to someone. So glad to present them and uh, allow people to take them in and consider them. As we uh, start each episode, each meeting, each session, uh, I always like to begin with a period of stillness and quiet uh, so that we can allow the distractions and the noise of the world to take a back seat uh, as we focus on this information and consider it uh, so that we can be fully present to it. And so uh, we start with this uh, a few seconds just of being still and quiet, uh, allowing God to enter our consciousness and and then we'll have an opening prayer. So let's begin with this uh, this brief pause. So let's pray together in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we call upon you now to join us in this hour and this presentation in a special way. We ask for your wisdom and your healing. <clears throat> Encourage and inspire us with clear thinking, understanding, and truth. And fill us with the deep and satisfying fire of your love. Amen. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, some of you may be watching on the YouTube uh, channel. It's uh, Grazia Plena Dr. Ken is where you can find that uh, videos that include uh, some PowerPoint slides. If, if you're a visual learner, you like to follow along that way. Um, if you just like to listen to the audio only portion, uh, we have the same. Uh, we recorded at the same time to make a podcast of the audio uh, uh, content. Uh, and that's found uh, uh, if you search for Encounter with Dr. Ken is the name of the um, uh, the podcast, and you can find it on several different platforms, Anchor, Breaker, Google Podcasts, Overcast, Pocket Casts, Radio Public, and Spotify. So we're happy to have you join us either way. If you're just listening, maybe driving to work or home from work, gardening, whatever you might be doing. We're glad that you're with us either way. So last episode, we talked about stress and recovery. And uh, certainly during the COVID time, stress is on the mind of a lot of people. Um, stress is really an issue uh, any time for us. And so um, we, we uh, last time, last meeting, we looked at uh, definitions of stress and pressure uh, pressure being something a little bit different from stress. Uh, we also kind of accepted that all of us have some stress and pressure in our lives, uh, sometimes more stress and pressure, sometimes less, uh, but it's kind of impossible for us to avoid stress and pressure, really. 
Uh, we we uh, acknowledge that the environment, the culture around us contributes to some stress and pressure for us, but we also generate and create some of it on ourselves uh, because of how we arrange our lives and what we might be involved with. Kind of the question, basic question of of last uh, episode is how how do we handle how can we handle stress and pressure gracefully in a in a good way? Uh, it's very common for us to self medicate stress and pressure. Um, self medication is not is not really a good thing <clears throat> as part of the reason for the topic. Is this tendency that we have to try to make stress and pressure go away, uh, whether it's by TV or uh, working too much or uh, eating too much or sexual things or alcohol, drugs, whatever it might be. Um, self medication can get us into trouble. In fact, if we do these things too much uh, and we're we're using these uh, unhealthy coping mechanisms to to deal with stress too much. We can become attached to them. We can get into a habit of with them uh, and then that that becomes problematic for us. Um, but once in recovery, um, stress and pressure pressure as we're making progress in our recovery, um, stress and pre pressure can become a stumbling block uh, for us. And so they may contribute to slipping and, and relapsing and falling back into old behaviors, old ways of thinking, old unhealthy attachments. And so that, that's kind of the purpose of why we looked at this topic last time. So I hope uh, that you enjoyed it. If you if you missed it, you can go back and, and find it. Um, so today's topic is activity and passivity and recovery. Um, and I want to start by uh, recalling um, the blind man that's mentioned in the uh, chapter 10 of the Gospel of Mark, uh, the blind man Bartimaeus, um, who was, uh, had, had taken up a spot uh, just outside of Jericho, I think it was, um, and as Jesus was leaving Jericho, uh, the entourage is passing Bartimaeus and he realizes this this Jesus that he's heard about that's healing people is passing by. And so Bartimaeus begins to call out to Jesus and try to get his attention. And some of the people around him and the crowd said, hey, Bartimaeus, quiet down, simmer down. Um, don't make a scene, you know, uh, be, uh, uh, let him let him be. Um, uh, but Jesus, Jesus heard him crying out, uh, you know, Jesus, Jesus of Nazareth. Um, and Jesus sent word uh, for some someone to bring Bartimaeus over to him. And so uh, some good people in the crowd went to Bartimaeus, helped him come over to where Jesus was. In fact, said to Bartimaeus, Take courage. He's calling you. He's he's responding. Um, and so Bartimaeus comes up to Jesus, and this really takes me back. This this always captures me uh, when I hear this and read this uh, verse in the scripture. Jesus says to blind Bartimaeus, "So, what do you want me to do for you?" <laughs> I just I think it's kind of uh, humorous in a way that I, I'm sure Jesus was quite serious about it. And I'm sure that Jesus had a purpose for saying that to Bartimaeus. So Bartimaeus, of course, says, Lord, I want to see. And then Jesus uh, cures him of his blindness. Quite a moving miracle, uh, quite a moving passage in Mark 10. Um, so the, the blind man's answer, Jesus, I want to see, uh, presupposes a few things in my mind, and I think it's it's good for us to consider this. Um, one, um, Bartimaeus uh, responds to this question, what do you want me to do for you? He's able to respond to that because he's aware that he's got a problem. Of course, he's aware he's blind. You know, how could you not know you're blind? But, but you can't respond to this question, what do you want me to do for you, if you're not aware of what the problem might be. I think that's important. Um, secondly, Bartimaeus is able to um, to answer that question of Jesus, what do you want me to do for you? Because 
uh, Bartimaeus has a desire to overcome his issue, his blindness, his problem. And so because he has that desire, which is again important, uh, because he has that desire, he can say, Lord, I want to see. Um, and the third uh, way that that we see uh, Bartimaeus answer is, is assuming something is um, it, it assumes that Bartimaeus believes that Jesus, the power of God, can change the issue for him, can change, can address his problem, can bring healing. So, so when Bartimaeus considers uh, and is able to respond to this question of Jesus, what do you want me to do for you? Uh, he can say, Lord, I want to see because he's aware he's got a problem. He has a desire for overcoming it, and he believes that Jesus can do it. I think those three things are super important. <clears throat> Here's another thought for you about uh, being active in our recovery. While the Holy Spirit and grace provide the healing, um, we need to cooperate through our taking action, through our recovery. We're not passive. Um, sometimes people enter counseling and they they kind of look to me, the therapist, uh, to do something to them. You know, like I'm doing, I'm doing something to them uh, to make them better. And really, the reality is that much of the work that they're having to do, uh, which sometimes that takes them aback. They're not too happy about that. I can guide them. I can make suggestions. I can discuss with them, and so so much as part of the therapy process. But uh, they have to be active in their recovery to some degree. It's really essential, and I, I make no, uh, I make no, um, I, I never hide that. I, I make that explicit to people uh, that they're going to have to participate in this process and do some work. Um, so we take the action, um, and then we patiently and confidently trust the outcome to God. So I might do all these certain things to stop. Uh, my drinking to arrest my alcoholism, uh, I might take a lot of actions, um, but if I'm able to stay away from alcohol or not successfully, I, I need to place that outcome in God's hands. Uh, so both are both are both are true. Um, I have to take the actions. I rely on God's grace uh, for the outcome bit more what sort of actions would we take and i'm going to just throw out 10 actions uh, for consideration to get us started there's certainly many more recovery actions that people can take but here's a few off the top of my head um, one action we take is self-examination for awareness remember uh, bartimaeus needed to be aware that he was blind um, we, we have to be careful with self-examination. We don't, we don't want it to become a self-preoccupation where we're all wrapped up in ourselves. Uh, but we need to take a little time uh, to look at ourselves to see, you know, what are people telling me about, uh, about myself? People are complaining about me, uh, how maybe I can hear and be aware, uh, be open to what the feedback that they're giving me. I can self-examine and consider if they're true, if those things that they're telling me are true or not. And so I, I can have that self-examination. That's an important uh, uh, part of the, the process. Um, next, I, I, I need to do away with a few, a few things that are potential barriers to my being able to take action and make some changes with God's help. So what are some of these? I need to shred and get rid of rationalization, making excuses, minimizing uh, my issues, um, justifying them, all those things that are part of rationalizing what I'm doing. Um, I need to stop being reluctant. Uh, maybe I've just been reluctant to change. I've been putting it off, putting it off, putting it off, looking at my issues. I just don't want to deal with this. It. too painful, too complicated. I've failed too many times in the past. So I, I have to be able to overcome my reluctance in order to take action. Um, Sometimes we, we're enjoying uh, the way that we're living and the stuff that we do, and we're doing it my way. Uh, I don't care what everybody else thinks, and so I'm kind of rebellious, right? I'm, I'm, uh, I'm enjoying what I'm doing. I don't want to change it. 
uh, everybody would just leave me alone, I'd be okay. Rebelliousness. Here's another one, resistance. Um, so I just I just don't want to change, just don't want to deal with it. I just don't want to face it. Um, somehow I'm resisting, that creates a barrier for my taking action. Um, and then I might also be resigned. Maybe I've tried to make these changes in the past on my own, without the help of others, without any counseling, 12-step uh, medication. Um, maybe I've tried my diet and diet and diet over and over, all kind of different diets, and I just continue uh, to put the pounds back on and, and go off track of my eating plan. So I just I just get resigned. You know, there's no way I can lose this weight. There's no way I can stop drinking or smoking. There's no way I can ever get out of this anxiety and depression. There's no way I can break out of this uh, unhealthy relationship that I'm in. So I just feel resigned. I just kind of give up. I fall into despair. Um, so um, if it helps you notice these words are all our, they happen to be our words. Uh, these are barriers to taking action. Um, Rationalization, reluctance, rebelliousness, resistance, resignation. Um, if you've got some of those barriers in your road uh, blocking you from taking action, then you might want to deal with those first and then you can move ahead with your action successfully after that. Um, one thing that we do as we're taking action is we're checking the options. What are, what are the different uh, possibilities of how I can stop smoking? Well, I can just go cold turkey. Um, I can do the nicotine patch. I can take this uh, medication. I can go to a, a smoke stop smoking group or class. I can see a counselor. Um, I can pray really hard. Uh, you know, all these different options. I can check out what are the options. How how do other people make this change and find this healing that I need uh, uh, in my life? Um, so we can check out the options and then make a plan. So I see what the options are. Maybe I'm going to try a couple of them. I make a plan of how I want to do it. I'm going to go to this particular 12-step um, meeting, or I'm going to go see this counselor, or I'm going to go talk to this doctor about medication and so forth. So check out the possibilities, the options, make a plan. Um, one of the things that, uh, that people that are successful in recovery um, commonly do is they form a support system. They engage some people that have their back, that love them, that care about them. Maybe they've criticized them in the past about the, the problems that they have, uh, but they look for the people that can be supportive, that, that, want to, that would want to encourage them in this change process, this recovery process. Um, maybe even some of them would be people that could hold them accountable so that they could check in and say, you know, hey, how are you doing? Or I could check in with them and say, hey, let me tell you how I'm doing. So I can be accountable to somebody. It's really important and very helpful, also very challenging and humbling. Um, but we, we form a support system and we begin connecting with them regularly, staying in regular contact with them. It really helps us in our recovery process. We, we uh, very rarely we can do recovery by ourselves. We need the help of others. Um, here's here's a, a really challenging one for you is to announce your goal. Um, so, for example, people that are stopping smoking, uh, one of the great things that they might do is to tell everybody they know, co-workers, people at home, friends, they tell everybody, hey, I'm stopping smoking uh, starting Monday. And, and so that kind of that kind of puts it on the line, right? That, that makes them accountable because they've they've told people this is what I'm doing. Um, and so in a sense that encourages and challenges them to, to follow through um, and to get and often by announcing their goal to others, they may get support and encouragement for that. People say, hey, yeah, that's great. I'm so glad you're stopping smoking. Um, and, and so that that really helps them to announce their goal. And when they announce their goal to other people, they're also hearing it for themselves through their own ears. That's also an important psychological thing as well. It's almost like making a commitment. Um, a person in recovery can take action by ongoing learning and studying. Um, many people will tell me uh, when they're starting to work on an addiction or a mental illness, hey, I wouldn't have heard this TED talk about it, or I went online and found this great website um, that uh, uh, is talking about this change I'm trying to make, or I bought this book, you know, here's this good workbook that's going to help me with my anxiety. 
Um, and so the person being open to learning uh, ongoing study about their affliction, um, sometimes the counselor makes recommendations for books or programs and so forth. Um, so being uh, willing and open to engage in this uh, learning and study process. Um, a person in uh, recovery might take action working on their resentments, their anger. Uh, they may work on um, their fears as part of their recovery process. They may uh, recognize that they've had some dishonesty in their affliction and uh, what they're struggling with, uh, that they, they uh, have been hiding things from people that uh, care about them or that are around them uh, at work and so forth. Uh, so they've been dishonest. Um, maybe they have a pride and that's part of their stubbornness and their rationalization, their, res their um, resentments and all the, the barriers. So this pride is something they, they work on and other defects too, other kinds of character issues. It's very common in, in a successful recovery that people take these on, they look at them deeply and they try to take steps to overcome them and seek God's healing and transformation of them. So for example, they try to shift from pride to humility in the process of their recovery. That's a great thing. Um, another action in recovery is to keep the action going. Um, one of the great keys of making a successful recovery is you, that you don't stop. It's very easy to have um, interest and enthusiasm and energy in a change uh, process and a healing process at the beginning and then to kind of get tired and distracted and bored and so forth. Um, but the key of, of recovery is to keep taking action. Um, as psychologists study uh, change, how people change, this is the key, is consistent action over a period of time. Um, and so, for example, this is why people um, are not successful on New Year's resolutions is because before they ever get to the end of January, they've stopped taking action. Um, so practice persistence and diligence. If you fall off track uh, for a day or two, get back to it as soon as you can. Don't give up, keep coming back on it. Uh, keep taking the action, get back into the action as soon as you can. If you overeat in one meal, then do it right on the next meal. Uh, practice persistence in your recovery. That's keeping the actions going and being diligent, uh, attending to the actions, uh, doing your work, uh, making your efforts is, is an important part of, of the action process in recovery. Another thing that's often very helpful is to, is to uh, for a person in recovery to, to reach out and help somebody else that's uh, in need of help. So maybe it's somebody who's dealing with the same issue. So uh, one of the beautiful traditions and helpful traditions of Alcoholics Anonymous is that the, the, the alcoholic that's recovered is helping the new person. The new person is coming into the program and that helps both people. It helps the person who's in recovery and it helps the, the newcomer too. Um, and, and so if, you're, if you've been in a recovery process, you've learned something, you've had some good experiences, you can give your witness, your testimony, your support and share your knowledge, uh, give hope to others based on what you've learned. And then uh, the 10th tenth, the tenth one is a uh, very helpful action in recovery to devote some, some daily time to prayer and meditation it takes us out of ourselves. It connects us with a power that's beyond us, a higher power. Um, so prayer and meditation, let the world stop for a little bit so that we can connect with God. Uh, we connect with God in stillness and quiet. Um, Cardinal Sarah wrote this beautiful book on the power of silence. I highly recommend it. Some daily time, especially in this busy, noisy, noisy world. Uh, with so many distractions, uh, learn to be still and quiet, uh, pray and meditate each day. What if we're passive in recovery? What if we don't take action in recovery? What will happen? I think we're much less likely to experience change and healing. Bottom line, 
um, I think our problems are likely to get worse if we're not active in our recovery. I think that we're likely to get frustrated and start blaming people when things are not going well for us because they're getting worse or we're not making any progress because we're not taking action. I think we're likely to continue hurting ourselves, God and others uh, with our with our behaviors because we're not taking action or not getting any better. Um, I think that if we're wrapped up in our afflictions, whatever they might be, then we're not as free to love God, ourselves and others. Uh, we, we're not free to love when we're in the midst of our uh, afflictions and not in recovery, not taking action. Um, we may find people moving away for, uh, from us if we're not taking action in our recovery. Uh, we might find that people just give up on us, people get angry with us because, because we're hurting them, we're continuing to hurt them. They say, okay, nope, I'm done with that. I'm not going to let you hurt me anymore. To be surprised really at that. Uh, we may miss out on the deeper transformation and conversion that would come by being active in recovery, uh, by working on it and experiencing the power of God, changing us, transforming us. Um, we might make very minor superficial changes that last for a short time, but if we're not active in an ongoing regular way in recovery, then we probably will miss out on deeper transformation and conversion. And I think most people do. I think most people don't engage in recovery in a, in a serious way, in a persistent way. And so they miss out on the deeper transformation and conversion of heart uh, that may come with us. That's the topic today for you to consider on activity and passivity and recovery. Um, on our Grazia Plana website, we have a list of resources, graziaplanacounseling.org. So a resource list that you can find has a lot of resources having to do with uh, chastity and um, sexual uh, addictions and, and hangups. Um, there's a few other resources for COVID and things like that uh, on that uh, web page as well. If you're watching on video, you can shoot this QR code with your camera phone. It'll take you there on your phone. Let's close with our prayer. Uh, to St. Michael the Archangel, as we always do, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So the next uh, meeting topic for next week, uh, God willing, will be courage and recovery. Um, and it's kind of a little bit of a follow up on uh, today's talk with Bartimaeus. Remember the, the crowd, the support system of Bartimaeus said to him, hey, Bartimaeus, take courage. Jesus is calling you. So we're going to lo look a little bit more deeply into what is courage. How does it play a role in our recovery? Um, we welcome you sharing these videos and podcasts with your friends, telling them about it. You can subscribe to them so that when they come out on um, usually Thursday or Friday, hopefully, um, you'll know when they come out, you'll get the, the notifications. So please subscribe uh, and we're happy to have you do that. Uh, finally, uh, Grazia Plena is a 501c3 faith-based nonprofit charity. We provide uh, mental and spiritual health services uh, in the Houston area and uh, we're, we're uh, accepting of anybody who wants our services whether they're well, very wealthy or not very wealthy um, most people pay some some little fee but our fees that we uh, accept don't cover all of our experiences by any means and so Grazia Plena has only survived for eight and a half years because of of the support of people like you, people that make donations. Um, when we welcome any donation, small, small or large, you can make the donation through our website, graziaplanacounseling.org. There's a, uh, a, a blue banner at the top when you get to the website and it says um, donate, I think. That's our, our payments page. Some, some people also pay for their sessions through that same uh, credit card entry on that page. 
We're happy to have you do that. Any amount is welcome. Uh, God bless you for that. Uh, so I uh, hope this uh, has been a good uh, topic for you today. Look forward to catching up with you next week. Um, God bless you. Please stay safe and healthy in the midst of this COVID. Uh, physically healthy, emotionally healthy, spiritually healthy, mentally healthy, everything. Uh, so take care. Bye now.